Dio Gwich, Taras Jock. And those of you who paid attention to your Irish lessons two weeks ago for me will know that that means hello, come in. Hello, come in. How are you? It's another Monday. It's Sunday where I am. I'm, I'm going to have to be doing these on a Sunday now because the daddy has got increasingly rowdy, will we say. Um, so I do be have to go the, over there earlier and earlier on a Monday morning. So anyway, it's Sunday where I am. You will be receiving me on Monday or maybe later in the week. Now, I hope you had a nice week. It was Valentine's Day. And um, me and himself don't give each other presents, nor nothing, because we just don't. Because, I don't know, it's not that we're not fond of each other. We just don't. But anyway, he surprised me this year with a present. I will show it to you. If you, fo if you follow Ter Terry Barlow on Twitter, you'll be delighted for me. It is the I have to calm down mug. And hold on, there's more. It is the Durdler Dler Elbows T-shirt, the Elbows Dance T-shirt. Um, if you don't follow him on Twitter and you're on Twitter, follow him. He's one of the greatest sources of joy um, in my life. Everyone who follows him adores him. He's a cat. <coughs> Even though I said last week I'm not fond of cats, I make an exception for him. So now I had a funny week for no particular reason. Now, the word depression does get bandied about a lot when people are feeling low and sad. I felt very low and sad last week. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, old woman isn't well, and that always makes me sad. And old woman is finding it very hard and very lonely, even though we try to mind her and everything. But like with dad, you know, it's just, I mean, my hat goes off to anyone in the world who's a carer. Like, it's a thankless and rewardless job. I mean, the carers in this country don't get paid. I don't think they get paid in Britain either. Um, I just feel very sorry for her. Um, now, I was scribing all week long and that conversely makes me feel like a worthwhile human being. But before I used to write books, I used to think that Danielle Steele or whoever, um, John Updike, they just sit down at their computer um, or typewriter as it might have been and they just they'd start at the beginning and they'd rattle it all off and then I don't know eight days later they'd get to the end of the book and they'd whisk the final sheet with the ping out of the typewriter and that'd be it that'd be the book that you'd know from the start to the end exactly what was going to happen and you would carry on on a sure path and nothing would derail you you'd have no doubts and it's not like that at all and it took me a long, long, long time to write the break because I can't tell you the amount of rewrites I did trying to get the dynamic of Hugh and Amy right and trying to kind of get the characters right. And with the book that I'm writing at the moment, like I have a great plot um, that I could do an elevator pitch on, but I, I, uh, I wouldn't be pitching to people in elevators because we don't talk to each other in elevators because that's the rule. But I could, it's one of those ideas, you know, but that's neither here nor there if you don't have the good characters. So I've been trying to get to know my characters and the beginning of a book is always a very kind of a, an anxious time because I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if they're going to be nice, likeable, flawed enough, too flawed, you know. So it's all a bit murky at the minute. So I'm swimming underwater in the murk every day trying to find something that looks a bit useful. It's like, oh good, oh great, you'll do. Come on over here, attract a phrase or nice piece of uh, idiosyncratic personality. You know, anyway, that's where I am. I hope that makes sense. So it's both rewarding and a, a bit scary. Um, but you look at, I feel so lucky. I mean, I, I don't know what I'd do if this wasn't my job. Um, now, myself and himself went out for our dinner last night, which is something we do once every decade. And um, it's really funny because, like, we have our dinner not looking at each other, but at the telly. Because that's, that's how we do it. We're happy that way. Don't feel sorry for us. And, but it's very odd. When um, I booked, she said, no, you can only have the table for two hours. And I had two thoughts. One was, you cheeky 
Steve Heck, you know, like with your only two hours malarkey. How dare you? I'm coming down and spending me money and, 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 and how dare you put um, confinements on my joy. And my other thought was, two hours? The, the full, do we have to stay for the entire two? And um, no, we managed, and we managed a good hour and 20 minutes. You know, like we, we discussed things and we asked each other, was your meal nice and that sort of thing. You know, that people say to each other. Now, can I talk to you about books? Um, right, this was sent to me as a proof. It is called Nightfall Berlin, and it's by a writer called Jack Grimwood. And this is the second book in the series. And oh my God, it is just fabulous. It's a spy novel like it's set in the cold war it's 1986 it's set in berlin it's set in east berlin and you know the way like james bond paints being a spy as like this um fabulously glamorous uh sexy uh life but in reality being a spy it's a grim grubby lonely scary place where like you're constantly paranoid because you know, you're being double-crossed and this is so atmospheric, it's so elegantly written. The character in it, um, uh, a major fox. Uh, right now, there's an earlier book called Moskva and I wish I'd read that first because I found out things about the first book in the second book. So don't be like Marion. Read the first book first and then read this one. And I'm really excited about the next one um, because the character himself is really intriguing. He's one of these ones like, you know, like um, the Michael Connolly lad, um, the, um, the uh, Hieronymus Bosch, um, the Harry Bosch character. You know, when you love a character, um, it's just like Le Carre. You know, it's like early Le Carre. Um, I, I, and it's different from one thing I've read lately. I really recommend it so much. It was, I just disappeared into that world totally. So it's Jack Grimwood. I haven't heard of him before, but I'm, I'm hoping there will be lots more. Now, the other one, this is sadder news. There is, you've probably read her books, um, a wonderful Irish writer called Emma Hannigan. Now, I've never met her, um, but I have read and loved many of her books and so has Old Woman. Now, my beloved friend, Cathy Kelly, is really good friends with her. And Emma has had cancer for 13 years and it keeps recurring. And now all medical intervention has stopped except for pain relief. And she's, she's not going to survive, like she's in her final days. And an awful lot of the Irish writing community know her. And I don't know her personally, but I love her books and, and I respect her very much. And I've just finished this book, um, which is Letters to My Daughter. She's only 46, Emma, and she's got two children, a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old. And, and her books are very warm, and there's an awful lot of emotional intelligence, and, you know, she writes about women's lives. Well, as a kind of a, a way to honour her, um, the wonderful Anna McPartlin started a sort of a, a rallying call um, that we would try and get Emma's book to number one. And Dubray Books, an Irish book chain, have uh, decided to donate all their profits from this book to um, cancer research. So if you were thinking of buying a book, um, that, I mean, that, that you would really enjoy and, and feel warmed and loved by, would you consider it this one because it's worth it and and you know i don't know how conscious she is at the moment but kathy's going in to see her tomorrow which is monday um so i'm sure she'd be 
delighted to know that a lot of love is being shown to her. Um, thank you. Um, so that is my news. My foreign film crew are coming later today on Monday. Will I stop pretending it's Monday? Will I stop pretending that it's like the Strictly show? It's Sunday. My foreign film crew are coming tomorrow, Monday. Tuesday. Uh, and mostly Tuesday. Um, and, uh, and then I'll be a bit distraught, I'd say. Um, but then I will carry on with my scribing. And uh, that's kind of it. Hang on until I ask himself, have I any other news at all? He's shaking his head. I think that means no. Um, yeah, I kind of feel, I feel, I suppose, I feel very upset about Emma. And I feel very, very sad for her family and for her, you know, her close friends. Um, it just seems so, you know, 46 is so young. Um, but look it, on we go. Because what else can we do? And for those of you who like spring, and there seems to be so many, it's, it's, it's a common. Our daffodils are coming up. Our daffodils are, are, are showing the yellow bits now. Um, I have to say, I love daffodils, even though they do. They are har harbingers of spring. I do. I love them. They're the most cheerful flowers and humble flowers. Um, and they are kind of startlingly hopeful. Um, like the colour is so intense. Um, I'll be back to you next week. Hopefully I will be in better form. But like, you know, emotions, they come and go, you know? Like, we can't all be top of the world all the time. And sorrow and sadness is just another one that washes through and, uh, and moves off and then returns again in a while. Because that is what it is to be alive. Feeling all the emotions. Hopefully not all at the same time. And now, hang on now. Moi moi, that's finished for goodbye. Or you can say, hey, hey, kitos, that's finished for thank you. Um, adios, that's Spanish for goodbye. Uh, Slána wallia, that's Irish for many things. Go, goodbye, drive safely, get home safely. That's kind of exactly what it means. But you are at home, I'd say. Um, 